Is poop a pain in your grass? Call Mr. Pooper Scooper, a professional dog waste business. They pick up and haul away all waste and will also disinfect cement and decks where the waste was removed. All waste is then turned into renewable energy. For cleaner yards and happier pets, go to mrpooperscooper.ca. What is going on, all you buttes and beauties? Welcome to episode 171 of the Hat Trick Hockey Podcast, brought to you always by GL Heritage, the official beer of the Hat Trick Hockey Podcast. I am your host, Brett Hedges, joined on the Zoom by the creator of the Hat Trick Hockey Podcast, Anthony Gaudet, and of course, the lovely and beautiful and smart Tristan McGuire joining <laughs> us on Zoom today. Looking good. How was your vacation, my man? Very good uh sorely needed like yeah going there was just like perfect timing uh it worked out you know i'd been planning for like six months with my cousins we were all able to finally get together do that and i haven't seen my cousin jeremy uh who hosted us um i haven't seen him in five years now you know before covid he came up here but uh it's always good to reconnect with family you know and uh experience and it's very very different there i had the life of riley you know Shout out to my aunt and uncle. They took very good care of me and my cousins. Uh, but I'm very grateful that I had that opportunity to get away and enjoy the sun. Uh, I got a few shades darker, so. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, you look well. You look darker, that's for sure. And you, well, it looks I mean, like you I've would got to enjoy right yourself. Now, but... <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. By the way, if you guys uh, like the merch that, you're, that uh, Anthony is wearing there, you can click the link in the description. Get all of our merch and merchandise. We, you know, you know there's always new stuff coming mm -hmm. in, in and out of the merch store all the time there. And, uh, you know, if you have any ideas of what you might want to see in the merch store, wink, wink, uh, yeah. shoot us some matches, see what you like and uh, see what, uh, what's possible. Of mm -hmm. course, you guys can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and all of our social media pages. Hey, let's start hammering that YouTube channel. Yes. We, we, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, cool. let's, uh, we've got these video podcasts going. Of course, we're, yeah. you know, we've got some other big things on the way there. So we're looking forward to joining you guys on YouTube this week mm -hmm. on the show. Yes. Lots, lots, lots to talk yep. about. So we're yes. going to have to pace ourselves here. Um, let's start off the show by asking Ant how he's doing. If he's still recovered from his full day, oh, you my know, with Darren God. McCarty, uh, okay. which you guys will learn about and see very soon on our channel. Ant, take it away. Well, okay. So first of all, the merch store we have literally a, probably a whole revamped line of merch for us is going to be coming out that will go to accurate creations which who we have like we've been with them for a while Wayne so Miller. yeah with wayne up there so all of our merch line is going to be going in there so look for that soon i seen wayne earlier on today we had a nice little um chat about it he just told me pretty much send me all the stuff that i want in there and he'll fix it up for us so wayne is an absolute legend for that so look for that coming up now the day with Darren mccarty let's so just cool, man okay so <laughs> for our fans out there like i'm trying to do this nice but you know what i'm i'm gonna shoot straight at you okay this yeah. vlog you're going to see about 3000 joints smoked in this, in this vlog. It was um, like, I'm just being honest. The only time that yeah. we do it on this show freely like that is when we have Darren McCarty. Yeah. He's literally, he's the only one like you see us or anything going on in this show right now. No, you don't. Yeah. So he is literally. So Not that you can see in frame. No, I know, but that's, <laughs> that's the, yes, true. Don't give it away. But anyways, but we don't just smoke freely on the show. So Darren, that's the only time we do. And he, we, he was on the golf course with us and it was sponsored by Tony's joint, of course. So it was, uh, let's just say it was a wild round of golf. Um, it was vlogged the whole round. Uh, we did the autograph signing. We went, we did the, to the course. Um, it was all vlogged everything, like every second of it. It, it was a pretty close match. I'm not going to say who won because obviously we want you guys, you guys to watch, but my thank yous, Claro media, these guys come out, followed us around the course. Absolute oh, legends. Yes. They were. That's who did it. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny those yeah. guys. And I'll, I'll say this for any of the 73s. I don't know if the executive team or whatever followed yeah. this. 
they would be perfect for the replacement uh, position. Obviously, Lori Beaton served yeah. many years oh, for the yeah. 73. did a great job. But Claro Media, their productions. Uh, what's his name? Is it Josh or Jonathan? Jonathan. Jonathan yeah. Claro. Yeah. Great guy. Oh. I've talked to him online before. He nails. Like, he does those things where he can lock onto the player's head on the ice. Yeah, I know. He does tracking, unreal like, work. Like, superb. 10 out of 10. Yeah. So and I'm looking forward to seeing the so uh, also to seeing to, it all. Yeah, a little thing about um he he's also going to be jumping on as one of our sponsors. So we're going to be doing some more work with him as well. So Beautiful. look for that coming up. Love it. Um Tony's joint man, like thank you obviously the just my lungs hurt for about 3 days, okay? After so I think it's I think fair to say can, that dude. Tony's joint treated you guys very, very oh, well. It was, they were top notch. Uh, Bellevue golf club. They were unreal to us. Took good like care of us, made sure that we kept everything going on the course. Um, but they were fantastic as well. The whole crew, my in-laws, Tom and Marty. What, Sweet a, people, what, man. A, what a spread of food that they um throughout for us to all eat we were all there uh, when we shot our little interview there with darren um to the guys who golf drew chris randy uh tony bobby um and of course the man himself four times stanley cup champion darren mccarty uh like thank you guys like it was uh it was an unreal day and then what happens like the next what was it the next day Mm -hmm. So D Max on Woodward Sports, he sent me a text before he went on the air. He's like, "Hey, I'm going on the air right now on Woodward Sports. I'm wearing your hoodie." So I got a screenshot. It's awesome. So then my dad, like, I sent like my old man a text. I said, "Hey, look at this. He's wearing our hoodie. It's pretty cool, right?" So absolutely, the red yeah. looked like the red it's hoodie looks so red, good on the camera. red. Beautiful. The red pops, right? So. So then it was so my dad's like, Oh, say something in the chat, but they were talking about football. So I'm like, whatever. I tuned out. I got my screenshot I wanted. I was going to post. My dad's like, Well, now they're starting to talk about hockey. So I chimed into the chat. And then the guy like picked my comment right away because he, um, seen that Mac was wearing the hoodie right in front yeah. of him. Right. And Darren gave us put it on an absolute fucking T back door tap in. Perfectly Tony the bold, toolbox. blunt, whatever you want to call it. And he sparked it up for us and he did an incredible job giving us a shout out and everything. So yeah, big, also big I wanna to I wanna make a point. Thank you once again, Darren. Also, he name dropped me. Beautiful. Yes. Love that. Unreal. Not, not I gotta say I, I'm happy he even remembers I exist, let alone my yeah. name. But, <laughs> um I, I wanna correct a statement I said, and it got mentioned yes. on the broad mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. So when it relates to Sergei Fedorov, in uh, the year following his Hart Trophy season, he played defense for uh, half a season. He did not receive Norris votes. That I want to correct that statement. Uh, he never received official Norris votes. It is quoted, though, that Scotty Bowman said in a public interview mm -hmm. that if Sergei Fedorov had played defense mm -hmm. and instead of forward, he would have won many consecutive Norris trophies. Okay. So although it's not official, you get the best coach in hockey of all time. <laughs> okay. You could have been I the was, best in your position in the it's, NHL. So it's, it's easy to go there. To, okay. Easy. To me, yeah. if Scotty Bowman saying that you could have won a Norris at that spot and it wasn't even your regular spot to me is a fucking Norris vote. I don't care what any, yeah, I don't exactly. care what anybody yeah. says. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. But yeah. So, but good. It's call, good that you, but yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah I never want to be – I want to keep my – um, so people think I'm completely truthful all the time. Like, I'll, I'll correct when I'm incorrect. I don't just make this up. Like, but, yeah, you weren't that far off, though. Well, no, no I, in my your, head it your, got – Your germ of your idea was there. Yeah. Exactly. You were in the area, whatever. I don't care. That's a Norris vote in my books. Absolutely. That's yeah. so cool. I just wanted to say, honestly, like being able to do uh, that interview with him – I didn't know how everything was going to go, but dude, that's something that I will, I'll never forget. Oh, so I'm really hoping that the people really enjoy 
uh, what we what we put out there uh, when it does come out. And so big thanks to Drew for editing and all that stuff. To, oh, yeah. to, so it's going to be a big project. For everybody, too, when it comes to the drop. So obviously this will be out. But we're going to drop, I think, golf first. And yep. then we're going to drop the interview after that. Yeah. So, but the interview and the golf will be dropped back to back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, but the golf video is obviously not going to be a episode, but the interview is obviously going to be an episode, but yeah, uh, the golf stuff's going to be YouTube. Yeah, dude, this is going to be wild, dude, this vlog thing. So it was kind of weird to me too. Cause I had a camera in my face from. Did you guys even pick anything up on camera through the smoke? Uh, I think so. There was one point in time I was sitting in the <laughs> cart, right? I was sitting in the cart and we were back. We were backed up a bit. Yeah. So there was literally like their group, our group, and there was like some like older guys, like older guys fucking behind us. And just like I look, I like look around and just everybody just starts, everybody's lighting them. So and I look and there's just like a like a haze or over our group, dude. Right. So all these, <laughs> and I could I could hear like all these old guys. They're all laughing like they don't give a shit, right? So I was just like, uh. Does anybody back there partake or whatever? Because like, if you do, like we, we got something for you. If you do, because like it was anybody of age that did, we were just here. Try this, Tony. Though I was riding in the cart with him, and he's like, "Here, try this. Here, try this, and here, try this." And we're out on the course with Darren McCarty. Like, of course. So, tell you big though, shout out to Tony. Big shout oh, out yeah. to Tony. Absolutely, the Tony. The Tony, yeah. the yes. Tony, yeah, Not Tony the toolbox. And I That's guess I, I found out after my my uh, my mom was telling me she's like, oh, your aunt taught him at Cardinal Carter. And I was like, oh, there you go. Oh, there's another oh small there's world. Another connection right there. So I'll, I'll let him know that uh, his old mm-hmm. teacher uh, Lisa Hedges says hello. So stay tuned for all that stuff, guys. It's good. That's very yeah. exciting stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I just wanted to go over some random news that we missed since the last show before we go into uh one of the uh, the big signing over this past week yeah. um i just wanted to to point out uh, the last show we forgot to mention that aj spellacy from the windsor spitfires went to the u.s development camp for their junior national team i don't i haven't heard how he went uh how he did yet or if he made it to like you know the next round of cuts or whatever but i thought it was super cool that after you know getting drafted in uh in uh by Chicago that he got uh, sent to the national development camp there too. And Windsor's um, equipment manager, J.R. Grant, he was also part of the the national development camp there over in Plymouth, Michigan. So oh, shout out to cool. those guys. Yeah. So Please. yeah, a lot of the, the U S national development team stuff goes on in Plymouth still. They don't have a junior team anymore. They moved from Plymouth to Flint, but they, uh, they still use that uh, rank in Plymouth for quite a bit of stuff for them. So <laughs> shout out to those guys. Yeah. Um, a couple of local guys that are or guys that played around here that are going to use sports hockey. So Oliver Pierre, he played for Windsor. Mm-hmm. He signed to go to the University of New Brunswick. He's going to go play for the Varsity Reds. Ooh. He's going to do very well there. That's a really good program. Sick They're, flow on the kid too. Was it, oh. was it last year? Was it New Brunswick or was it? Does that the team that went undefeated? Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So go. that's Gardner McDougall's team. I believe he stepped what a down. Name. Oh. To to uh to to take over a junior team, I don't know the exact team, but that program is just it it just it it goes to the national championships every single year, so they're very good. So Oliver Pierre goes to UNB. Alex Christopoulos, who uh was a forty nine goal scorer for the Windsor Spitfires, really good player. He played for Saginaw, won a Memorial Cup, so he's gonna go play at St. Francis Xavier. Oh, in oh, the they look nuts this year. They've gotten I think five or six OHL graduates. Yes, like or, or CHL, maybe maybe just CHL, but anyway, they're they're loaded. Like it's a huge program. Yeah, the AUS is really strong there. Uh, a guy who played on, uh, who who got into a a handful of games for the Windsor Spitfires with a couple of years. His name is Ryan Struthers. He also committed to St. Yeah. Francis Xavier as well. Uh, he was a junior B guy, uh, kind of. He would get called up, play fourth line, some third line stuff. Uh, solid guy. He had a couple of uh, had a handful of goals uh, over a couple of years with Windsor, but he's going to go play in U Sports there. Um, before I wanted to ask you guys, do you guys know of anybody else who's committed to U Sports program that I may have missed? T. Oh. There is You're someone. Good. Give me, give me a second. I'm gonna look no up problem. Francis Xavier's uh, team. No here. problem. 
because I wanted to bring up uh, Windsor's recruiting class. So uh, there's a there's a handful of guys that they brought in from uh, from local programs. So I'll list those guys off while you're looking that up, T. Okay. Um, yeah. So the Windsor Lancers recruiting class they announced this uh, quite a bit ago, but this is a it's a, it's a big class, not a big class, but it's an important class. Mm-hmm. Um, they just went to the Queens Cup two years ago, so it's a really good core of that team. But uh, they do need to you know continually recruit and replace players right due to graduation so a couple of leamington's top scorers are going to windsor this year that's caden faust who was their captain and then alex cunningham who was their assistant captain and their and one of their lead scorers there so those two i think they're gonna do very very well at the U sports program they're coming from a really good program in leamington they led them to some really uh to the highest of highs for that program as of right now and now they're going to go play for Windsor. Uh, joining them is Ray, Ham- uh, yeah, Ray Hamlin. Hamlin, yeah. Who played over in the BCHL for a little bit, then came back and played in Leamington. So he's the other forward that they picked up there. Um, so that's a big piece. That's Kevin Hamlin, the head coach of the Windsor Lancers. That's his son. A nice little reunion there because he he played out in the BCHL. That's a far ways away. So oh, yeah. And then, you know, realized the opportunity to come back home was there. Uh, went and played in Leamington. Now he's going to go play for his dad. Probably going to be a four, maybe five year player in in the OUA. Great, a great move for those guys, and that I think that's really going to help that program yeah. a lot. Uh, there, I did on- find uh, the, there's another former Spitfire and Ottawa sixty seven and Guelph Storm played all three places. Jacob Mayat. Oh yes, committed to St. Francis Xavier. Okay, thank you very that much was another for picking player. that up. So yeah, six foot one hundred ninety talent. 195 pound forward alternate captain when he was with the spits as well yeah like on the in that trip that they made to the finals he was like their number two center and he was good he was a good player uh you know they lost that that final in seven games he was he was a solid player Mm -hmm. and you knew you kind of knew after the start that windsor had this year that they were going to have to kind of sell off their best players right and they got some picks for him he got to play with with, in ottawa he got to do what he needed to do and now he's going to go to saint saint francis xavier so antigonish uh, Nova Scotia gets some good uh, hockey boys there. Did you like that? That was a good one, eh? That was a good one. Big ish. So there's two more goalies. I, I I have not checked to see if there's any more players that they've announced, but they're going to be opening training camp soon. These were the main five players that they were talking about because they had local ties, mm-hmm. right? So the last two are Max Denoso and Kyle Metzen. So those are both goaltenders. Max Kyle played. Metzen. I know Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. So uh Kyle played in Burlington, some junior hockey down in Burlington. Max Denoso is a guy who played in Ottawa primarily in his OHL career, got traded to Windsor at the end of his O overage season, got to play in uh you know in a, in a couple dozen games for the for the Windsor Spitfires. Now he's gonna go to the U Windsor to the U Windsor. So after Nathan Torquia uh you know, leaves eventually, there's going to be some room in the net for the Windsor Lancers. I'm not sure if he's, if he's out of eligibility or not, but uh, that, that definitely firms up that, uh, that position for them oh, yeah. with some local talent. So that's pretty cool. Shout out Kyle Metzen. Um, if I'm thinking yeah, let us right know guy. what's going on with him. Uh, Lesore legend. Oh, that's our angle. <laughs> yes. I, I remember, I, I think he's, I could be wrong. I yeah. think he's an 3 I'm pretty sure he's my age Yeah, or a year younger. And he, he, um, yeah, he was a good goaltender who left school pretty early to pursue his hockey career. So good for him. I'm happy to see it's come full circle uh, back to local ties. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he played in Burlington. So he he got mm-hmm. some experience there. He had a, he had a rather respectable save percentage there. And so he's coming back home. So congratulations to him. Uh, full recruiting class, uh, both the entire uh, recruiting class. You can find that on goalanswers.ca for the full story there. They do a great job. Uh, promoting that, but those are the five local players that are going to go play for Windsor this year. And I've had that on my my outlines for a couple of weeks now, so I need. I'm glad I got. <laughs> that. Um, scratch her off. Scratch it off, <laughs> guys. While we were uh, about to film with Darren McCarty, um, we heard some really big news about yes. uh, promotion. So Anthony Iaquina, yeah, from yes. Lakeshore, has been their head coach for seven years. He gets promoted i guess because it's the same ownership system he uh gets the job with the lasalle vipers new head coach of the lasalle vipers junior b team of the gojhl Mm -hmm. uh congratulations to him absolutely well deserved right and uh what are what were your initial thoughts aunt or tristan whoever wants to go first uh 
I'll start. So right. he also is taking with him Milan Dobric. Thank you. Assistant as well. So that eliminates his opportunity, or well, maybe not opportunity, but him, the possibility of him becoming the head coach of Lakeshore. I don't know if there's any sort of prospect in place right now. I would imagine there is, mm-hmm. but um, it seems quite sudden. The season's only a couple weeks away, and obviously we got final camps coming up, stuff like this many camps this weekend actually um i know a lot of junior b teams are making their final cuts and that basically tells where the last of that cut goes to all the junior c teams you know or if they go back to triple a if they're young kids uh, but i really think this is a good move for lasalle obviously chad shepley you know uh he's got a personal life he's a dad now congrats to chad yep. um I- i'm not sure what went into his thought process i'm sure it had to do with the starting of a family but he steps aside. Um, very, very good coach. You know, one coach of the year, I believe. Uh, first year with, La- yeah, yeah, he did. With LaSalle, which the, the team was very, like, raw, very, very young. Mm-hmm. So aside, obviously, from some older players like Patrick McManus, who now is 73. But, um, yeah, they were young, and he really showed he knows how to develop these kids who come from AAA or Junior C from a year prior, you know, 16-year-old mm-hmm. year. And he could develop them. He steps aside. Now you get a guy who's proven to win, right? Kind of yeah. the complete opposite. Not a rookie, fully experienced. And all these kids who are staying, they've got that year under their belt where Chad laid, you know, the foundation for what could become a really, really good program very fast and sort of become what they are designed to be, a feeder system for the Windsor Spitfires, you know? Yeah. Generally, you see the Spits, they draft a kid and they go through their own system outside of Windsor you get what I'm saying and then they end up yep. on the Spitz roster there's no real this guy became this out the, the only one I can really think of is um like an example of a junior b team developing a player into something is Easton Cowan I know Easton Cowan played Komolka Kings before mm-hmm. he played London Knights a full year many times you don't see that success with NHL drafted they're usually right in the OHL yeah so basically right. you could see kids like I don't even know who their youngest player would be, but you know, guys like a Bryce Bello, who the 73s had, now he's on LaSalle. Thanks I know. Bring him up. Yeah, I know the Kitchener Rangers um, had looks at him, stuff like that. Obviously, undersized D man, size comes with age. Obviously, like I didn't put on my weight until around 19 or 20. So you've got time before you hit that stride, but you don't really have time, right? There's the, there's the balance with, with OHL. You can really tell where your career path is at 17 years old. Yeah. If, if you're not a full timer by 17, unfortunately the way the OHL works is you're pretty much done. Like you're going to become a junior B guy. Like, like Patrick McManus is one of those guys. Same with Gabriel Piccolo um, on the 73s and Trevor LaRue, uh, um, the Lakeshore Canadians, like guys who are, you know, they're right there, but they're not quite, that next level it's it's kind of like they're not skilled enough to earn that top six position of being a skilled forward but they're not you know tenacious enough to be that bottom six you know six foot four grinder who goes and wins puck battles along the board so it's really that they're stuck in no man's land that's where you become a premier junior b forward and uh, i'd like to see that system with anthony Aquin at the helm maybe see a bit of a change in the tides in how GOJHL develops into OHL and hopefully LaSalle can, be- can become a program that is number one in the province for the Spitfires because that's what they need after this travesty of a year yeah yeah I, I think that's a that's a great point um and what do you have to think I mean is there anyone better for the job absolutely like, not I, I, like you know what I mean yeah. think about it he's been with Lakeshore how long did we say Brian? seven full seasons it's so and he's how old He's 30. 36. Okay, so should he be started... noted. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, should be noted he was also an assistant coach with the, the 73s for a good long while. I believe he has one championship uh and also one while playing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Just he absolutely insane all over the place. The pedigree. But he's just yeah. like he's just such a well rounded coach. Like he's the type where if you if you do something good, he's going to be the first guy saying, Hey, good job. But if you, you know what I mean? If you're not doing stuff too, he's going to be the first one that's going to kick you in the ass too. And that's just, 
and that's his style, and that's how it should be. This is junior hockey, not to mention he's trying to groom these kids for the next level, which is going up and playing for the Windsor Spitfires. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a great move. I don't know, like we were saying, why do we don't know who would take over in Lakeshore now that Coach Q brought his assistant with him? Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. I think LaSalle, I think Coach Q's, it's going to be a really good program under him. I I just realized um, there is there is a name that they could hire. Who's that? Go for it. What if I and this is not I'm I'm not trying to cause a rift or anything. Oh God, the here we go. But the rideouts. I fucking knew you were gonna say that. Um, recently, <laughs> obviously, this past year, you know, and I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not trying to. You know, no. But I honestly think that would be like obviously there's whatever stuff happens. You know, mm. time goes on, people mature, but people leave jobs all the time. Yeah, exactly, and. I think that would be dangerous combination. Yeah. A very high octane offense, obviously very. under Rido. When he was head coach of the 73s, they were winning games 13 nothing. Like it was, yeah, it was crazy. It was an embarrassment. And obviously now Essex on paper looks like clearly the better team. Lakeshore has been quiet, like quiet. Yeah. I haven't seen any signings from them at all. Obviously both teams still need to sign a 16 year old. Um, officially and Essex has signed you know um Patrick McManus and Austin Gouvermont so those are two top two top six forwards that propel Essex to another level I believe their entire top nines played junior B it's just Mm -hmm. incredible actually you weren't here when we actually shot the shit on those two so can you kind of give us a quick little rundown on what you think on the two newest signings well, yeah, every other team in the every other team in the league is cooked. That's my um, analysis. You want a professional analysis? They're gonna like destroy. I mean, it sounds every year we see the same thing. Oh well, S6. I know we sound like Leafs fans yeah. for fuck's sake. Here's here's yeah, <laughs> and we we lose in the finals, so we got to prove it this year. But um, well, the Leafs never make it there. But that's that point aside. Um. Our top six of the 73s, this is just me spitballing. Obviously, Tony sets up lines differently than me. Tony Broski is in a different mind space than myself. Much smarter. But anyway, the top line looks like, unless there's been changes made, which I'm not privy to that, Kill Kuvion, Gabriel Piccolo, and Patrick McManus, which they're going to go over two points per game. I'm saying right now, God willing, everyone stays healthy. Second line... You've got oh, you could put a million guys in there. Luke Shirk, Nate Dowling. Nate Dowling is gonna oh have God. a terrific year. Fun fact, Nate Dowling still has two years with the 73s. His <laughs> overage year, 100 points. Love you, Nate. You're a great dude. <laughs> Heck yeah, brother. Have a big year. But and then you've got, you know, a bunch of other people. Carter Dabinsky missed a lot of last year with an injury. Yeah. He's supposed to be a hundred percent. He's a truck um, too, that Luke, kid, man. You know, My obviously God. Luke Shirk. Um like Goovermont, dude, like Goovermont on that second line with Dowling. Yeah, Gooby like, and Dowling. They're both six three. Like yeah, that's well, two Goovermont's big bodies. He's probably six five now. Like they're tall, lanky. The skills these guys have. Anyone, go watch Austin Goovermont's <laughs> like playoff highlights. I had him at six seventy three stats and highlights two years ago. Yeah, two years ago now. Walked absolutely walked more towns defenseman, like to the shadow realm. He went skating by right into the boards and just top shelf on John Chartrand, who obviously, you know, we love John as well. Great guy, friend of the show, but went right under the bar under him, over the shoulder. Like, the shot Gouvermont possesses is lethal. Mm-hmm. And, and he had an injury-riddled season last year and still was over a half a point a game as a rookie in, in – uh, HL with the London Nationals, who are very, very successful program. So mm-hmm. high expectations for Gouvermont this year with the 73s. I-, I expect the 73s this year to be even better. I know that's lofty expectations considering their past two seasons, but once you know, once we start to see the back end formulate with defense and goaltending, I think 
the 73s are really going to set themselves up, especially with Tony Porosky returning and having that stability. That's a, also another thing you have to consider with Lakeshore is a new coach. There's um, growing pains, right? Mm-hmm. Or learning curves, whatever you want to call them. The 73s know this guy and love him. I just, I'm thinking in my head, like the guys we still have, we still have Jaden Sagan. Like there's so much down this lineup. You're just like, well, Gabe Barrett comes back. One of the hardest workers in the league. Yeah. Like this team is going to be scary. Obviously Seth Martino, like. Or Seth. Big Bird, according to Ethan. Big Bird. Big big Bird. Yeah, Seth Martino. Ethan calls you Big Bird. So the Essex loses Bryce Bellow to the 73s. Where do no, they? Essex that? loses Bryce Bellow to, to the Salve. Vipers. What did I say? This, oh, Seven sorry. Threes. Threes. Sorry, yeah. So the, the threes lose Bellow to the Vipers. How yeah. big of a hole is that? Well, hmm. Bryce was a big it's – a, it's a big hole. Bryce played yeah. some – played on the top two units usually, and he was uh, – Right, and he's so smart with the puck. He walks the blue line. He's got good he like vision. He's got a cannon for a shot. He, yeah. uh, I don't know. Bryce is one of those kids, man. He does it all. Yeah, very like very him. patient he, too. That was hits, his thing. He'll fight. He doesn't care. Like he'll. Bryce don't care, and Bryce is that's like he's. I don't know. He's just so smart of a player. I can't say enough good stuff about Bryce. Well, I'm glad that a good player like that uh, got the call up to Junior B because yeah. I can't wait to see what uh, maybe Iaquina has to uh, has to work with in that team. I'm not oh. gonna lie, like if uh, as soon as they announce Iaquina being the head coach of LaSalle, hey man, I'm gonna go check out a couple more games than oh. I than I might on a regular year, Absolutely. right? I, I think the entertainment value will definitely be there. I think it's a big name to bring to the local junior B scene, like, like, just like you were saying, Tristan, like Mm -hmm. if he can turn in, turn that program into something, you know, where you can churn out high quality OHL players, like you said, like, you know, getting somebody who may end up being NHL drafted through your program. I think, I think that's going to be huge for him. He spent enough time in junior C where he's done what he has. He's done what he can accomplish. Mm -hmm. He's won two Schmaltz cups in three years. He won one during COVID came back one one another one and i feel like this is just i think this is the natural progression for him I obviously i don't know him but i think that this works out great he's a LaSalle guy mm-hmm. uh he played in LaSalle a little bit obviously uh, he played one like half year in junior b so he's been with the program you know like it this just makes it this just checks a lot of boxes on my yeah, part sorry absolutely <clears throat> and and just to the point of Bryce um we're obviously giving more accolades but He's very, very patient with the puck, and I think that's something that's sorely missed in Junior C. Um, mm-hmm. Everything's pretty forward, but he really came into his own by the end of the season to be patient on the breakout. If you don't like what you see, don't be afraid to circle back. You know, you're a good skater. You know what to do. You can protect the puck all you want. Swivel your hips, you know, butterfly your feet out, and, like, he did it perfect, and he just reset. Or he'd have bursts where he'd take it right in himself, and it wasn't a dump and chase. He'd skate into the ice let his wingers follow in with him and center go to the net. Like very, very smart defenseman. He will be missed, but uh, I also trust Mike Paley to replace that position um, effortlessly. Terrific hockey mind. Obviously he did some uh, like, I I don't even know what to call it. He he's done everything to the maximum potential to build this team into the best squad possible. Like we're looking, people were talking about the best 73s team on paper since late 1970s. Like, These guys are like Gabriel Piccolo could play OHL games. Patrick McManus has what other team in the league can say that. Mm -hmm. That's actually, okay. There's a guy, this is a little bit of news. Um, I kind of, well, obviously there's that new junior B rule, right? Well, not junior B junior rule. Explain it. Okay. So basically they changed it this year um, where it's kind of like a, I like to call it the superstar contingency. So each team is allowed one player that has aged out of their junior progression in every other normal sanctioned junior B league. So like um, GOJHL, OJHL, OHL, and uh, CCHL, that level, NAL, I believe NAHL it's called. So all those guys who are now 20 can play their 21st year, but only one per team. 
So whereas before it was you drop down for the previous deadline, so you couldn't just decide your last year, oh, now I want to play, it would be the previous year. Um, this is leaving a lot of room for interpretation and opportunities for teams. The Alliston Hornets signed a guy who is NHL drafted in the fifth round, uh, uh, Jackson Lacombe. Or something he played uh one sec. Yeah, look it up because he looks like he's 30. Uh this guy's gonna come down. He's a defenseman da- drafted by the Dallas Stars. He's dropping down to junior C. And he is going to be probably the best defenseman this league has ever seen. Craig Spence is up there too, obviously. Um, but it's just like ridiculous. What's what's the name there, Brad? Are you seeing that? I haven't found it yet. Keep going. Okay, yeah, but it's just this ki- Stuff like that is nuts to me. Like, and he's not just, oh, he played a couple games OHL. This guy played his full, like, six years. That's very rare. <laughs> yeah. And now instead of going college or anything, oh, how about I play Junior C and put up 100 and something points as a D man? Like, this guy's going to be nuts. He's scary. If the 73s make it out of this division or whoever does, they're going to run into a problem with the Alliston Hornets. Because this guy is the kind of guy who can put a team on his back. Because just the experience will carry the team along. Mm-hmm. And the skill. I haven't found anything yet. Okay, I'll, I'm going to pull it up because I, I sent it to my uh, friend the other day. Okay, well, um, get us that name in when you have it. Um, I wanted to ask you guys one more thing. Sorry. Where is he? Oh, sorry. I wanted to just update. Go, keep going, Tris. Um, a couple of signings for the LaSalle Vipers. They signed oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kieran McNally from Mississauga Senators U18 AAA team. And then the same week, they signed Bryce Bellow. So that's another. Mm-hmm. So that's two defend, big defensemen that they've signed yeah. for, the be- for the beginning of the year. Um, obviously, the McManus signing is huge. For, for Essex, Gouvermont coming down, back down from Junior B down there. And like you said, um, it's so interesting how these like overage rules or like the, the superstar contingents yeah. are, are factoring into Junior C hockey now, right? Because like you said, Gabe Piccolo, it, no matter what, what kind of like whatever level he chose to, he could be very successful at kind of at, at almost every single level, right? Exactly. Yeah. He's just one of those guys who does everything right. And honestly, it's, it's kind of sad that it comes down still to size kind of in many leagues in many ways. And not, not that Gabe's a particularly small guy. He's probably five, nine and one sixty ish. So like your average 20 year old pretty much, but it's just, they want that size, right? They want that extra. Oh, especially at center. Like you got to have a designated something you're really good at to excel. But if you're just good at everything, you kind of get overlooked, especially by scouts. But the name, I got the name. It's Jacob Holmes of the Kingston oh, okay. Frontenacs. Uh, I'll get you his OHL stats because it's... Jacob, Jake Holmes? Yeah. He played for the Spits. Yeah. He was, he was a defenseman. Yeah, he played on the Spits. He was okay, on well, there. There you uh, go. West... Perfect. So yeah, Jacob went... Holmes. Yeah. He yeah, was a good, highest... good defenseman. Wow, really? He's playing junior C now. Yeah. Good for Six foot two, 211 pounds. July he boy was, like me, but he was uh he was Sudbury's captain at one time. Yep. So look yeah. at this. You know all this stuff. Boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go. Jacob Holmes is a good player. Um, yeah. That's a, that's exciting. That's exciting. I I like that they're doing that because it makes the product just you know at every single oh, level makes the product be so exciting premium. to watch. Yes. See what oh, this yeah. guy does like, and he's probably going to discover a dimension of his game he never would have had an opportunity to. For sure. He was and, probably. Oh, you're going to be a shutdown guy. Boom. That's exactly Pretty what it was. Daring. And now he's going to go, all right, let's have some fun. He's probably going to rock kids who are 16 years old, put them on their butt, rip a clapper bar down, and the goalie's like, this guy was drafted 140th overall. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Like, I played double-A hockey in, like, Barbasol, Ontario. I don't even know. Like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Um, That's a great way to end that segment. And you guys have – there's training camps starting soon. Very soon. Yeah. 73s will be starting this week coming. Uh, I believe they're on the ice Tuesday and Thursday. I know Tuesday for sure. Don't quote me on Thursday. Open to but, the public? Uh, it'll be open for us if we want to, I believe. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, I wasn't sure. So Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. That's why I'm saying that. 
but yeah. um mike did ask me if we were going to be at camp so i'm probably going to be there taking notes and just seeing who's doing <sighs> what and at the scout Oh, I like to see. Oh, I like to see with Tristan. I will fucking come to your house <laughs> in Jersey. This guy's right big. <laughs> He's gonna pull a D Mac on you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. that yes. well, the main thing what I wanted to say was that the training camps around the corner. That means hockey's yes. corner, boys. What, yeah, we're here. Oh what are your thoughts? Let's go. Finally, it's back. Let's go. I'm. Um, come on, we're boys. back. Yeah, we give me some swag. We'll get it out. Yeah, um, yeah. Before before we go, before we forget, big news in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Austin Matthews now the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Tristan, you obviously look like you have some th- thoughts about this. Oh, this yeah, should be good. I do. <laughs> Buckle up, everybody. So, let's go. <laughs> Many people like Austin Matthews. Obviously, I'm I was not, surprised. I'm, yeah, I just. I'm not one of those people who likes Austin Matthews. Is he very good? Yes. He knows where to shoot. Um, But what are you doing? You're disrespecting a guy who's played, I don't even know how many years now, 13 years, 14 years in the NHL for DeFerris. Like, former captain of his prior team. Yes. And now, Toronto. And what are you doing? Oh, it's it's a new... I'm sorry, but okay. First off, I gotta say it's the most cringy thing I've ever watched. That <laughs> press conference where he's just awkwardly handing Matthews's jersey, like, and everyone's like golf clapping. Like, what? And Matthews has got his freaking earring. Like, what are you? It's just like that's the message you want to send. This is the guy who's gonna be your captain. Yeah, he scores sixty goals, but yeah, it's like John Tavares, Morgan Riley. Those are captains. Austin Matthews, Poppy's uh, time to he, shine. He he had <laughs> he had an upset stomach and <laughs> missed half the first round. So that should just end the conversation right there. You know what Jamie Ben would have done if he had an upset stomach? Score Get a hat. Trick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are captains. John Jonathan Taves in his prime. If he had an upset stomach, that guy played through debilitating. Uh, like what is it? Some kind of an autoimmune disease. Yeah, it's some sort of before he gave up on right? hockey. Matthews had some bad Taco Bell, and he's at home <laughs> sitting watching his team lose in the first round. <laughs> come on, obviously it's for comedic purposes. I'm being this dramatic. People don't <laughs> don't come after me too hard. But oh, so funny. But, but the one thing I didn't understand because I was talking to Ant about it, I was like, did 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 Tavares retire? And I did not know. Like I did, and like they're saying that he was involved in the decision. Like how much was he involved in the decision when you know when they say, hey, we're gonna take the like you know like it doesn't seem. I mean, I wouldn't surprise me if the Leafs forced him to retire early. Like imagine him just like I'm done with this. (laughs) Hockey isn't for me anymore because it's. I have now, now that this is all like went down and everything do you guys think he'll get dealt by the deadline no i mean contract. it increases it increases the likelihood i mean lot. like you oh, might as well moscow dynamo well you might, <laughs> might as well get something for him japan right? yeah exactly the cool moon red star no what's the other one who <laughs> no, there's another one you guys are... <laughs> the, the, the oh not the saigon what are they called what? the dragons oh my gosh yeah, the um I think they're doing Tavares super dirty on that. I don't the know. other I don't like um, question I have, and I'm just being honest, is like, uh, to me, this should have happened before JT even got to see. You. They should have just put it on Matthews in the first place. You know it's going there at some point anyways. You put it on him while he's young. The team was kind of eh then. Just throw it on him while he's young. You know he's going to wear the C anyways at some point. So why are you going through all this shit? Put it. They could have put a C on him. Put an A on the other. You know, on on Craig, JT. Craig and to, say here, like, you're gonna mold this guy to be the best captain that he can be, while he's young. And like then they're kind of side by this. It does look super cringe. I'm not gonna lie, it does. But like I said, I just think it should have been done a long time ago. And I'm just being honest. And I think they're both great players. Craig, but Craig Berube. Craig Berube is going to go from like having Ryan, Ryan O'Reilly to now Austin Matthews. Mm-hmm. He probably, if he was a part of the decision, okay, well done. 
I trust his uh, judgment, but imagine him like just finding out, oh, we're changing the captains. Uh, we're going to give you Austin Matthews, a shiny new toy. Mm. It's like a Corvette. On the surface, it looks nice, but deep down, it's 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 a Chevy. Like it's it, yeah, it's just another car. No one's gonna like it. It's <laughs> exactly. There is always something better. Like John Tavares has heart. Dylan Larkin has heart. Like I said, Jonathan Taves, Austin Matthews, is not doing it. He does not strike me as a captain. Assistant captain, sure, he's got skill. <laughs> And I'm sure it motivates guys when he scores big goals. But he's not the guy to go, come on, guys, in the room. Right? Like, am I? Am I <laughs> you bappy. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm far off, though. I, I really, truly speak this. Like, I, I think there's about four guys on the Red Wings who could be better captains than Austin Matthews. Yeah. Mo yeah, Sider, sure. Lucas Raymond, they have heart. Mm. yeah this doesn't make any sense to me um but but if it's but if it has kind of come along this far like matthew nice there's a guy okay matthew nice in about four years if they had let Tavares play with his contract he should have 100 percent been the captain over austin matthews but his contract's done after this year right jt he's is he going into his last year of his deal isn't he he is I'm pretty sure this might be the last year he's in, too. I thought he had, like, three years left. No, that's why I said that the likelihood of him being dealt, because I thought it was him and Marner were due up at the same time. Wait, are you seeing Matthews or Tavares? JT. I would sure. just be interested to hear a Leafs, a couple of Leafs fans' perspective on this. I know that, like, the hype train around Matthews is like, oh, yeah. you know, like, put the C on your best player. I'm sure, like, some Leaf fans would be happy, but I would be like interested to see like what some like some diehard fans mm-hmm. really think. You know, like if you want to know what I want to see way. him do, I want to see him drop the fucking gloves. <laughs> I'm not joking. I do. I do. You want to wear the C? Think about the guys in the past that have wore that C. Yeah, Daryl Sittler, Matt Sundin, Austin Matthews, Wendell Clark. Exactly. Did Darcy yeah. Tucker ever wear the C? No, he was an assistant. Know, Dougie captain. Gilmore, fucking like yeah, yeah, Dave Anderchuk, fucking like you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Gamers, gamers, and then now Dion, uh, and then now this guy's coming in and like wild the second outfits. Dion era. <laughs> okay, now this guy's coming in and it's like wild outfits and like he has a merce and stuff like that. Like it's just it's, <laughs> it's super weird, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, Matthew, they, 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 he's got the listen. He's an like, awesome player. He's a fucking fantastic. sniper. The guy, the guy's oh, amazing. Okay, top top five in the league yes, easily. But I want to see people him, would say top three, not me personally. But I want to see him drop the gloves. It'll go a lot. It will go a long way in the room, especially if he's wearing the C. That's my opinion. But <laughs> yeah, I always thought that it was going to be Morgan Riley that would get it after John Tavares. Yeah, yeah it would have been a good pick. And I always thought that they would just keep an A on Austin Matthews for as yes. long as he was there, right? To to keep him a part of the leadership group, at least in part. You know what I mean? But I could see uh, yeah, I, I could see Matthews getting the C though at some point. Like that's why I said you it, might as well just gave it to him. Well then ago. every team in the NHL should just give their best player the C. It, it, well, it, I would, think about all the think about a lot of the teams, the guys that wear the C's though. They are the best players. I'm Most telling you right players. now, Boone Jenner. Okay, what well, you're talking? <laughs> he's not the best player on the Blue Jackets. He's, he's going for the weakest link there. <laughs> well, like, okay, Marshan's not better than David Pasternak. Well, give it, give it time. Who do you think is going to wear the C after him? It'll be pasta. Charlie McAvoy. No, it'll be pasta. McAvoy is very good. I would give it to McAvoy over pasta. See, it's that it's that mentality of. You could tell who's cocky and not cocky on the ice. Yeah, you got to have a measure of confidence, but I think it sends the wrong message. When that guy has such of a me mentality. Steve Eisman became the captain, and first thing that um, Scotty Bowman did when he came in and says, okay, it's fun, you're getting 150 points, but you're never going to win a championship. And what did Steve Eisman do? He adapted, and he said, okay, fine. 
boom, two way hockey player gets three more cups, mm-hmm. like three three cups in his career. Hall of Famer. I don't think he ever got an Art Ross. Or yeah, actually, he did get the Art Ross one. No, it was like third. Oh, and I don't. Yeah, but I don't think he, he ever. He, he ever was won. Third, he that third. year he got like 150th or 150 points. Um, I think it was Gretzky Mario and Wayne. Mm-hmm. And then I, I don't was Mario playing already? Or I think maybe it was. Like, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It might have been uh, <laughs> someone random, like the one guy on the Eves or scene. Niels. Who's the guy in Nielsen? You guys remember Nielsen? Kent Nielsen on the Calgary Flames. There's a name. Pull that one. Out of the... But anyway, um, I digress. Matthew's not a captain. And I'm saying this. He'll he'll get that C pulled off real quick. I give it two years. I think he's going to – He's well, he gets – well, I think – I don't think he'll like it personally. I think he will – not enjoy being the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He, but he's already in the spotlight with all the like the media and all. So nothing's really going to change for him though. I guess you're right. Right. It's, when it comes to like, you might get enough NHL cover and this and that, but I'm saying though, like nothing's going to change. Like he always has to do interviews. He always has to deal with fucking everything. So he's ar- but, already but doing now it. Now he's got to own it. Well, yeah, See, there's the difference yeah. oh. before. Yeah, you're the scorer. You're supposed to do this. Now you're not just the team's best goal scorer or best player. You're their captain. And you got to speak to why you lost this game. You got to speak to why uh, you hit the crossbar instead of hitting the back in the net. And, it, mm-hmm. and he's not going to have those answers. Mm-hmm. He won't. He won't. I think I, uh, it should be interesting to see how uh, how the media yeah. – um, how they, you know, how they amplify all of his misgivings and stuff, right? Like if he's if he's scoring but they're not winning, they're gonna they're gonna be mad at him. If they're winning and he's not scoring, they're gonna be mad at him, kind of thing, yeah. right? Can't wait. So, yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tristan, um, Tristan cho- chose war today. When it well, comes it's gonna be funny because I, <laughs> I know Sportsnet and TSN. We're gonna get two months in. Should Matthews should be stripped of the C and like all this mm-hmm. stuff, like. It's Let's gonna. Put, he's doing good. It'll be. Oh. It's gonna get to his head. He's gonna. It's gonna get to his head. Let's he's put stopped. a. Uh, let's it's put an be... over under on the media calling for him to get the C. Do you want to say before or after Christmas? After. Yeah, I'll say after. after I think those, Christ- he'll have a hot start. You know, twenty goals in like twenty five games or something, and then there will be that one game where someone's gonna get blasted from behind, right in front of him, one of his teammates, and he's just gonna go. Oh. That must have hurt. <laughs> but that's what I mean. That's where that's the difference. That's where he has to step up. Yeah, like, we'll wait to see if he can answer the bell. Dude, you're six three. Like, isn't he like two hundred and thirty pounds? Like, isn't yeah, he like a, a monstrosity a of a guy? Yeah. I I really enjoyed all the memes that I saw of the people saying that he's gonna age like thirty years in like Drew, 10 I know Drew threw one up on that me, was yeah. wicked. <laughs> that was pretty good. His hairline was already like back here. <laughs> Yeah, this thin like mustache. It won't like... be long before he goes bald. Like, well, well, he go he'll shave it down like Matt Sundin. I think he'll lose oh, his yeah. hair pretty quick. I think, and he'll end up being bald. But he'll be a beauty. Like he'll have a dirty stash with a bald head. You should That's just do I'm a calling. mullet. You should rock a yeah. mullet. You should rock a mullet, Ant. I can't even grow hair. Okay. <laughs> then you don't need to be. Well, I mean, I can, that. but it's just probably it wouldn't be. It'd be like. I, don't think I grew, I grew longer good. hair over COVID and slicked it back. It wasn't really a mullet yet, but we got close and it's just not for me. Because the problem is I've got my hair just grows out. It'd be yes. like a fro. Do it. Yeah, I'm I'm similar. It gets thick right <laughs> here and then I, it looks like I'm wearing a helmet. Yeah, exactly. There we go. The Lego man. <laughs> yes. <Do it. laughs> is uh is there anything else that we missed? Um obviously we had a great time talking with dmac and we're hoping that the fans are going to really enjoy that interview when it yeah. drops uh tristan i had a really cool time meeting your dad uh and i had a really cool time meeting your dad too at the mm-hmm. thing so mm-hmm. uh thanks for uh introducing me to those and that's honestly mm-hmm. it's one of the things i'll never forget so uh i, I keep yeah. telling people about it and they say oh, what yeah. you did what with darren mccarty yeah and uh so <laughs> yeah. wait, what? To- yeah. <laughs> also too, um i want to give a shout out to the 73s fan page as well because they were out with us on the course and everything and they were 
also a uh, a big help to us that day as well. So I want to give oh, a yeah, big shout will. out to them. So guys, thank you. Check them uh, out on TikTok too. They put out some funny, yeah, they're, yeah, they're funny good. memes on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All they the are pretty funny. Always good for a laugh. I'm trying for to sure. think, is there anything else going on in the NHL right now that no trade that signings? I haven't heard. I know it's at that. Oh yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, two teams. Uh, sorry, two offer sheets. Um, the oh, St. Louis yeah. Blues offer sheeted uh, like something over four million to Philip Broberg because they're both RFAs, mm-hmm. and I think two and a half million to Dylan Holloway because the Oilers are currently over the cap, and they gotta like get rid of somebody or something to try and you know take he on to, yeah. pay those two guys because they have to match. And if they don't match, obviously there's compensatory compensatory mm-hmm. picks that would go over when you offer sheet a player. So I think it's a second rounder for the over four million with Broberg, which I seen or uh, sorry, yeah, St. Louis would be very pleased to do that. Broberg's a great top four, probably bottom pair in a Stanley Cup team, but he could he's up and down the lineup, big enough that he can you know play a physical role and skilled enough that he can play power play minutes as well. He's really coming into his own, and I think St. Louis sees that. And, you know, they got aging Justin Falk, Tory Crew, guys like that. I think it'd be a really – it's a really big power move. You know, they're laying it all out on the table saying, hey, we're not afraid to come after you guys, especially Holloway too. That's I like that. Two guys from the same team. You know, they're really throwing it at them. Mm-hmm. So now the Oilers, they really got to choose. I think they're going to let – um, just because of the nature of the contract, and that's not something the Oilers are going to f- – in the first place i think it's going to wind up that they let uh broberg walk and they pay holloway the two and a half million and end up moving somebody out um who that is i don't know i don't know what their cap scene is like right now most likely evander kane um i i could see that happening because he's not really a big part of their future and had a rough playoff so yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you're. I think you're right on the money there with the Evander Kane pick. I don't think he's going to be in Edmonton very much longer, or if, or if he does, it's not going to be. They were. Uh, of time. They were saying too that there's a guy in St. Louis who will be. I forget who they said, but he's RFA next year. So they said possibly look out for the Oilers to for a little. Oh, is it Robert Thomas? Who is it? I don't. I forget who it was, man. It wasn't Thomas, but someone's going to be up that they said, well, Edmonton may just offer sheet that just to, as a little payback, shall we say. It was. I see. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to think who it was, though. I forget who it was. But I did see that. I was reading. I was like, ooh, I kind of like that little inside drama in the NHL. And also, uh, last thing I can think of from the NHL, uh, Jacob Vrana. Yeah former Red Wing who like got blasted. Like Eisenman did not like whatever happened there. Traded him away for a bag of chips to St. Louis. St. Louis one same thing. Started out good, like really dynamic, and then falls by the wayside, starts getting scratched, gets sent down, stuff like that. Passes through waivers. He's on a PTO back with the team that drafted him and the team he won a cup with. The Washington Capitals signed him to a uh, professional tryout. So he'll get to play some preseason games. So that'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Did he spend time in the assistance program? Yes, with okay teams, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's. I'm just making sure I'm getting the right guy. Well, hey man, uh, I'm all about second chances. So hopefully uh, he can get himself back in the league because you know those guys deserve it. Um, the one last thing I did see: uh, uh, new numbers for new Detroit Red Wings players. Uh, mm-hmm. Vladimir Tarasenko is going to be number eleven, and Cam Talbot's going to be number thirty-nine. Uh, there was a bunch of other ones there. You can find it on their social media, but those are the two main names I wanted to ask you guys about. Uh, before we go, who makes a bigger impact, Tarasenko or Cam Talbot? Uh, Tarasenko. I think he's going to bring so. a lot of a lot of skill to the lineup. That leadership, we, yeah. Oh, he can he he can still snipe, man. Like he can. Super talented. It I, feels like I, he's been playing forever. I honestly you think a guy who especially watching him with the rangers last year he's gonna wear 56 this year another signing i I know i'm not answering your question but eric gustafson who the red wings signed i think he can make the biggest impact of the three because he's replacing 
uh, replacing Shane Gostishbear, who left. Ghost, yeah. Um, Gustafson, if he gets the right playing time. Well, he, he was just under 60 points. Obviously, this is like five years ago, but with the Blackhawks. So clearly, if he plays in the right offensive position, like if we put him, you know, number two power play, don't put him on the penalty kill because he's he's kind of not wide one dimensional, but he's very much you know the front half of the ice uh, is his forte. He's going to have a very good impact, I think. And the Red Wings, if they use him right, which I trust Derek Lalonde, I think he did a good job this past year with the decor. I think the Wings will improve, uh, even though people are, you know, oh, you lost Sprong, depth scoring, you lost this, you lost this. And like you said, the stability that Cam Talbot brings is he, every year, has over a 9-10 save percentage. Does he have over a 9-20? I think he only had it one season ever, but he's over he's over a 9-10. And if that means uh, that comes out to around 30 out of 33 saves in a night, if he's keeping you to three goals – it's a pretty good chance to win, you know, under two, yeah. under three goals against. Yeah. You should be able to win, especially the Red Wings strength is their offense. You know, Raymond's going to improve Larkin when he's healthy. Cider's going to become more offensive. Same with Edvinson, who is going to have a huge role with the wings this year. Uh, but of those two, you mentioned, obviously Vladimir Tarasenko, as Ant said, he had a limited role in Florida when he got traded there uh, out of Ottawa, which Ottawa is just a dumpster fire. They don't know what to do, but anyway, I think Tarasenko, yeah, if he plays top six minutes, maybe he bounces back 25, 30 goals. Uh, that's optimistic, I think. But he's kind of, uh, a couple of years ago, what's his name, got a second chance with Montreal, Ilya Kovalchuk. I think it's reminiscent of that. Um, just yeah. this kind of like, oh, he could return. Like Patrick Kane coming to the Red Wings. That's that same, wow. If you told me 10 years ago, one day, oh, Patrick Kane and Tarasenko are both going to be on the Red Wings. I've been doing backflips. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's a hundred point player and an 80 point player. Boom. Injected in your lineup. Like obviously they're both shells of what they used to be. Kane less. So Kane still has potential, I think to, you know, get point per game, but um, Tarasenko, I think if he's good enough to have him be a half a point a game, like if you get him around 40 to 50 points, 25 ish goals, I think that would be perfect for the wings. Um, and I don't think Steve Eisenman's done. I still think he's got, one more move up his sleeve I because there's still a hole at 2c where you don't really want comfort or cop whether that's an eight down this and mark or casper we'll see but if those guys flunk out at camp i could very easily see eisenman making a move for someone like a josh norris out of ottawa or maybe even a martin Natchez, even though he just resigned with the canes something along those lines who they call it the hockey trade right a player for a player you know, we got to get rid of some cap. We got to improve our lineup. You guys can play this guy in a death role, stuff like that. But everybody forgets too that Vladdy, like that guy, he likes to hit and he likes to be physical oh, and yeah. stuff too, right? So, but normally when you think of him, you think of him as like a guy who can score and this and that and set plays up. You don't really think of him on the physical side, but I like looked him up and there's like a bunch of his hits <laughs> like so oh, he's he like he likes to hit. Guy. yeah so i like that yeah beautiful i think uh, i think you guys are both pretty uh in the same vein there i think he's gonna end up being someone that's gonna pick up some big points on like power play like second power play unit yeah he'll be able to do that he'll 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 chip in 15 20 goals i think this year and i think he's gonna fit in really well i'm looking forward to seeing what the wings have and i think we should say it on the air right now i think we should all take our dads to a game this year yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll That'd figure that out. My dad's going to wear his full Habs gear or something. I'll be like, Psh. I'll go watch a Wings Habs game. I don't care. Yeah, Let's my dad's it. a Habs guy, too. I would. So. The Wings would smoke him every year. They <laughs> kill the Habs. Dude, that's true. <laughs> but... Any last words, guys? No, man. I think that's about it. That was a good happy. Absolutely. Okay, folks, For thanks for tuning in. If you guys want, make sure you, uh, if you want to, Check out some of the merch, like the one that Ant's got, or check out some of our new designs. Make sure to hit our merch store in the link. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all of our social medias. And, of course, download wherever you get your podcasts. For Tristan and Ant, I am Brett. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Hat Trick Hockey. Take care, everyone. I've lost my fight with time. My numbers up and up.
could do it.